So uh, last week, Rishi spoke on uh, the power of the cross. And um, while I was sitting there, I suddenly felt led to, even as he was speaking and ministering, a lot of stuff, the words were just you know coming to me. And I was just seeing, receiving so much life from uh, what he was sharing. And uh, so this, is, is, this is topic is not shared often at Beloved. And uh, reason being is because we want to show you the new and showing you what the new is. And a lot of churches predominantly, when they talk about the cross and they talk about the power of the cross, and they, uh, it's always centered on, um, it's still centered on the old life, or it's centered to the point of, you know, Jesus saved you till here, and, you know, he's got, he saved you from your sin, and he saved you up until here. And now, after you became born again, it's like from you, it's, it's you and Christ now having to work together to get to there. So if Christ or the Father is here, and you are here, this is the cross, the middle place, the meeting ground. It says, now that you are born again, and this is predominantly what most churches around are preaching, and it's like you have to work your way to there. And uh, this isn't a real reality at all. And uh, this is the reason why it's so important, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that Rishi shared this, and I'm going to continue on this, is because understanding the truth of what the cross has done it is the starting point of your new creation. It is the starting point. It is the ending point of your old self. And any anything that's talking about your old man, it's nailed to the cross. That's the old self. It ended there. And we're going to talk. And I'm going to talk to you about that uh, in a bit. And I'm going to show you what you were saved from and what you have right now. Okay. So, okay, so have you, um, I'm sure you've heard of this before. I mean, there have been companies, you know, in the West, you've heard of these stories where you're working in a company, you're working hard, and someone at the top does something. Okay, I'll give you an actual live example of what happened. There was this company um, back in the US, they were, um, they were doing amazingly well, and they were doing really well in, in terms of financially and all of that. And um, someone at the top, okay, from the top level, makes a decision, makes some sort of an error. As a result of that, the entire company goes bankrupt. Entire company goes bankrupt. Have you heard, so like how we in India, we have something called a provident fund. Out there, they have something called a pension fund. And uh, there was some embezzlement of that pension fund that was uh, utilized. And all of the people who've been working in that company for years, uh, their hard-earned money, for them, they think, okay, you know what, at the end of their tenure after they retire, there's a huge lump sum waiting for them through that pension fund, like how we have uh, a provident fund similar to that. And they were thinking that this is what they're going to get at the end of their retirement tenure. but Someone in that company goes ahead and, you know, embezzles that money, tries to um, utilizes that entire pension fund of those people, and it gets caught. I mean, the guy goes to jail, whatever, but the entire company falls into bankruptcy, and all of those people who have worked hard, all of their hard-earned money is just gone. And it doesn't matter how hard they worked. Honestly, it doesn't matter how loyal they were to their job it doesn't matter how uh, good they were at their job at the end of the res at the end of the day the result for them was just death there was no life at all in that situation was it any of th any fault of theirs but was if they had to go to court even if they were proved innocent they would still not get the money because the money was used and the government's not going to bail them out so same way you know, because of the fault of one man, the entire company had to suffer. The entire. It's same way with Adam. One man's offense, because it's just one man, sin entered the world and death entered through sin. That's what it says. That's what the Bible says. That's what the word says. One man's offense, one guy messed up. And as a result of that, sin entered the world and death through sin. So, by nature, all of those who were born of Adam, meaning all those who were born of the flesh, 
all of us out here are born were born of the flesh at some point you were, you came out in uh through flesh and blood you were by nature born of adam and by nature you were a sinner was there any fault of yours no it's a question no you didn't do anything to deserve that i mean you you were born as an innocent baby had no understanding of right or wrong but you were born a sinner no fault of your own it's like um you know uh you've heard of these stories in fact um same way like i i'm sure you've heard of kingfisher airlines when it you know went bankrupt um one guy's mistake and the entire company has to suffer no fault of their own i don't know it doesn't matter how hard they tried how dedicated or diligent they were at their job one mistake one man the entire company has to suffer you know it's like uh, these children who were born i remember back in the 90s when you know hiv aids was a big thing uh back then that was uh, the big thing you know is spoken about and we they would always show you you know pictures of images of these people in africa because predominantly most of them out there were infected with hiv and uh, they would show you these children who were born by default they had the hiv virus no fault of their own you know i mean then sometimes you just look at that and feel sorry for them uh but these are innocent children innocent children born and their blood is contaminated for no fault of their own the same way that is was our condition when we were born born through fresh and flesh and blood that was our condition that was our st- status for no fault of our own none of us deserved to be a sinner but just through adam that's what we were but that wasn't the end of course we we knew that jesus was there he had a plan and he had a plan to send uh the father had a plan to send jesus to make a new species of being so that he says that what is born of flesh is flesh but that what is born of the spirit is spirit when you were born again you weren't just um saved from your old self and you were once a sinner now you're saved and uh and now you start living a different life or you you changed your lifestyle that okay that's a byproduct but what happened when you became born again you were born a new creation a new seed a, a a new creation that never existed before that's why you call the second adam jesus is called the second adam the one that brought about many other sons into glory so while there was there was a race of being that were born sinners that were just born this way without any fault of their own through jesus a new race of being came about it's the new creation and we call them sons that's why we call ourselves uh you know why it's we call ourselves sons and why we talk about sonship it's it's not a male or a female thing sonship is not about when we say you're a son it doesn't mean it's not a masculine or feminine thing it says god is a spirit right in heaven there is no there's no such thing as male or female jew or gentile none of that he says god is a spirit and you and i are spirits so there's a spirit does not have a gender jesus is the son of god that word son does not give him a class of as a gender yes he was the son of god came in in uh, in the likeness of man in a male's body but he is the son of god and that son of god is not a gender thing that's a class of being so when you and i are born again you're born a son of god that's why we call it sons that's what we talk about sonship we're not referring to you and i in in the flesh anymore you have the spirit of sonship and you've been adopted as sons i know you're understanding and you're hearing this you know so the cross the cross was one of the most significant events that ever took place in the history of man 
the most significant things that ever took place in the history was Jesus' death on the cross. In Roman times, uh, they had, this was their way of, uh, you know, treating, um, punishing sinners as punishing those who are thieves or who are meant to uh, be prosecuted. This was the worst treatment that they could ever give. But they would only just nail them to a cross. Jesus didn't just get nailed to the cross. He was uh, whipped with n number of lashes. He had his back ripped open. Flesh came out. And he was nailed. He had to carry his own cross all around. And uh, he was nailed to the cross and he, he died. He had to die that death. He had to die in the flesh so that you, could, you can I have, and I'm going to show you what we have in a bit. You know, uh, I was talking about uh, a baby that be, that's born. What Jesus has done for us is he's, give, he's brought us back to the place of innocence. He's returned you back to the place of innocence. Today, if a baby is here, and the baby, um, the baby does not have any understanding of what's right or wrong. It's it's a baby. It's not doesn't know that I'm not supposed to put my finger in a socket. It doesn't know any of that. They're innocent. You know, if a baby um, drops over something, like a bowl, a fish bowl, the bowl shatters. Um, the parent is not going to go and shout at the baby. Why? Because the baby does not understand. There's no concept of right or wrong. The baby is innocent. Instead, the parent will go lift up the baby and just show the baby that, you know, how much I love you. But now tomorrow, if JJ decides to do that, JJ is not a baby. JJ, how old are you? 17. JJ is 17 years of age. If JJ goes decides to do that, at his, at his house, throws uh, over uh, a fishbowl, Sabina is not going to be, J come JJ, let me give you a hug. I don't think so. Why? Because JJ now knows the difference between good and evil. He has the knowledge, of, and, and through the knowledge of good and evil, he knows what is right and wrong. Sabina is not going to treat him that way. I hope not. I'm just joking. I hope you will know. But see, this is what Jesus has done. The Father has done this now for us. He has brought you back to that position of innocence. He has brought you to the point where you have no understanding. There is no, he's not looking at you of what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. That's not his meter anymore. He has brought you and returned you back to that position of innocence. You are innocent completely through Jesus and he is the door Jesus is the door if you receive that when you got born again when you receive that what you've done is you are now a new class of being a new creation and he's returned you to that innocence so if you drop over a, 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 a fish bowl the bowl breaks the fish dies you are innocent and that's what you are that's what he's given you it's in your nature All right, so uh, just go to the first uh, verse that we have there. In James chapter 2, verse 10. So we know about the law, and, and this is important because I know we have been uh, doing the series of Romans. And uh, in, the Roman, in Romans, it's all about the foundation that we're doing. And I think we'll continue, uh, we'll pick it up uh, next week again, uh, where we stopped. But uh, so important that we get this because this is going to show you and uh, lay a foundation of where we're at. So um, in the Old Testament, uh, so we started off with Adam. Adam sinned, uh, Adam sinned, and sin entered through Adam and death through sin. So as a result, when Adam was here, okay, he was born, Adam fell, and immediately sin entered to the world. As a result of that, everyone who was born of Adam, by nature, uh, just had sin in their blood. So it didn't matter what you did, you had the knowledge now of right and wrong. So those of you who have the knowledge of right and wrong, you are not innocent anymore. The example that I gave you earlier, where uh, explaining to you with the baby, 
that baby was innocent it didn't matter whether they uh what they did they were declared innocent but now through adam and everyone from there it says that you were now because you were sourcing from the knowledge of good and evil there were two trees in the garden we had the tree of life and we had the tree of knowledge of good and evil so the tree of knowledge of good and evil the fruit it has a good side to it that's why we call it good and evil and it has a bad side to it but the end result if you're eating from that tree if you're sourcing from that tree if you're um if your mindset is everything logical based on this tree because the tree of knowledge and e of good and evil all it does is it reasons out it tries to come to logical con conclusions uh, it's it's in opposition to what the word says the foolishness of god is what does it say the foolishness of god is better than the wisdom of man amen so uh this sort of reasoning out here this sort of adam mindset which is reasoning out with right and wrong and thinking of it should i should i not this is good and this is not this is from the knowledge of good and evil whatever you do it's going to result in death the end result is going to be death so it might look good for a while but the end result is going to be death similarly let's like uh, for example uh abraham abraham he was given a promise he was given a promise that through you you will have descendants and uh you through your seed now abraham thought he was trying to help god he thought okay fine maybe i'll just go and do it another way not through sarah he says through your seed what does that mean if abraham and sarah are joined to the lord it says you are one spirit so obviously he meant through sarah now abraham used his reasoning through the knowledge of good and evil and try to do something else what is the result of that the end result will be death now yes did he get a son he did he got an ishmael but what is the end result of that the fruit it's death so you may use the 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 source from the tree of knowledge and good and of good of good and evil yeah and you might get an ishmael but the end result of an ishmael which you all know where that race is led to the end result of that is death as compared to an isaac an isaac is not used through human reasoning and logic an isaac was not used through uh normal understanding it's just uncommon wisdom of god amen so abraham sinned fell uh sorry adam sinned fell and then we move on to from here sin entered death through sin and uh, right up till here but you when uh, right up till the time of moses okay let's assume that moses is here there was no penalty for that or that there was no um you were not the sin that you did or didn't do was not imputed to you it was not accounted for in your record so you would die yeah there would be a death for you and that you would you would die because death entered through through sin but that death was not being held on you and you were not accountable for that up until moses is time with the law was introduced and he says okay and the law strengthened sin and death and people started dying because of that law brought about condemnation and condemnation death okay so that's when uh you started paying for your sin and you know uh the end result is we had to do good get good do bad get bad it was all about performance right up till here that we we understand uh if you're following what we've been doing in romans we understand you know that the law was good but it was introduced to heighten sin and show you that you needed a savior you cannot do uh if you think that you can please god you can't nothing it says that all of sin in romans uh, 3 it says all of sin and fallen short of the glory of god all there's no one who can say i've not sinned all i've sinned because by default you are a sinner and you've fallen short of the glory of god who is the glory of god is jesus you the father is not going to compare you with anyone else only with jesus because he is jesus is the glory of god you know you you might be the best um the best person or or best version of someone 
and you might always try to be the best in whatever you do or do you know work in your own strength but it doesn't matter how good you are you can't compare yourself with any other your comparison is not with mother teresa or any of those people your comparison is only with jesus because he is the glory of god and none of us and all of us fall short of that glory of god okay it says in um in james 2 it says for whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all that means no matter how you hard you tried okay from the time of moses up until now and even up right now there are still people trying to keep that law and i don't mean the law in sense of those 10 commandments plus 3633 odd commandments i'm not talking about that law i'm talking about a law that is a work that's the mind of adam trying to do something to get favor with god so jesus died he came and uh, died on the cross to be the perfect sacrifice right up up until the time of moses till uh, jesus um they used to sacrifice once a year they would come with a lamb offering sacrifice as an atonement of their sin because the law was introduced and sin was now imputed on them till moses sin was not imputed onto any man but the, mo the moment the law came through moses sin was now imputed as a result of that uh every year on the day of atonement that's the jewish festival they would come with a lamb offering uh presented to the high priests of there from the levi tribe they would inspect the lamb and shed blood and that blood would be uh an atonement for their sin for the entire year before that and then they would go back to doing their own thing and for the next year they would be all good and then again repeat this every year after year after year and those sacrifices were just god's way of showing them mercy and granting them mercy and just um his way of just being good to them and of course he had a plan through jesus and jesus came on the cross he said he's called the lamb of god you know why he's called the lamb of god god because that is the perfect offering sinless lamb spotless lamb only his blood could have paid not just for your present but past present future he's taking care of it all and i i want to show you what that has done because when we talk about the cross and we talk about um Jesus death on the cross most people or most believers understand it up until i have been saved of my sin and that's where you they've not really understood what the power of that cross is and what the sacrifice of that cross is because salvation the word salvation uh it's translated from the greek word sozo and it's not just um it's not just saved from sin that is just one thing but so sozo or salvation it's inclusive it it talks about uh prosperity it talks about health it talks about um being whole being complete that is your salvation so if you've been saved only of your sin that's just half and you're not you're not seeing the full picture you're not seeing what the death of the cross has done for you okay i want to read let's read uh through romans <coughs> where was i okay so okay so we we are born in this world and our bodies are subject to the law of sin and death okay there is a law at work Sim similarly to how the law of gravity is okay it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not it's still there you don't need to believe it for it to be real it's it's a law it's real uh there is a law of sin and death here okay the moment you were born uh our bodies were subject to the law of sin and death but in christ there's a higher law can you just i don't have this uh but i'll just read it it's in romans chapter 8 and verse 2 onwards just read quickly because uh, i'll just read it okay it's fine because through christ jesus the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death 
the law because through Jesus Christ the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death there are now two laws at work here before you were subject to the law of sin and death but now there is a new law working in you that law is called the spirit of life you know when you go to a court okay if you're ever if you've heard of this or not you go to a court and uh, let's say you go to the lower court let's say bombay court bombay high court no so it's called bombay court okay you go to a, to the lower court and you go maybe you you put across this your case and uh, you lose but what if you take it to the higher court and appeal for a higher law that's at work or there's one law that will always supersede you know in um so i work in doing taxes and one of the things i uh, i do is i we need need to know the law and we need to know there are a lot constant changes that are taking place in the tax laws in india uh, one of the most annoying things you know other other countries they don't they have a very easy tax system india is the most complicated and it's always updating the law changing new uh, things and adding more amendments and uh, circulars notifications one thing over the other and you will always see when you're when you're fighting cases when you're going to appeal um you may lose at one area but there's another law and you can appeal at maybe at the tribunal level and then maybe high court supreme court whatever and you take it up higher cases and you would see that the law will always win if you know the law and you know the law there's a higher law and you appeal on the basis of that higher law you will win if you have a good lawyer okay there are two laws now there's the law of sin and death and then there's a the law of life when you got born again the new creation in you is now subject to the law of life it says that the law of life through christ has set you free from the law of sin and death so this is the reason why uh, so many believers are still struggling in this area still struggling with when it comes to why do i not see this in my life or why do i not um why am i not getting the results because you're sourcing from this law you're still from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil you're still sourcing from the law of sin and death but how many of you know that there is a higher law working inside of you and that law trumps over the lower law it trumps if you let it trump that is where you that's why we need to renew our mind it's so important it says to renew your mind so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god so that you can see that this law this new law working in you is greater than this law of sin and death that's in the members so it says it says the law of life in me has set me free from the law of sin and death the holy spirit inside of you is giving life to your mortal body that's the reason why you don't have to be sick that's the reason why you don't have to struggle the way the world does that's the reason why you don't have to think of how do i need to plan if i'm going to delhi and i need to should i get an umbrella for the for the heat no you have the law of life inside of you so you work differently that's why we see when you go to a place where it's there's a scorching heat you bring the rain the law of life inside you amen 1 peter chapter 1 verse 18 for you know that it was not with perishable things such as gold or s- silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from our ancestors from your ancestors but with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect and he was chosen before the creation of the world you were not redeemed through precious things of, the, of this world you were bred through gold or silver you were redeemed by the blood of Christ the precious blood of Christ which was uh it says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth think about that for a second 
before the foundation of the earth, provision was already made so that you and I can walk in this newness of life through the cross. The cross is your is a reminder. The cross is your reminder that everything of the old, everything of that mindset, everything that was subject to the law of sin and death, everything that was off Adam, everything that was making you think logically, you have died to that. You have died to that and that is nailed to the cross. You are dead to that, that way of system. You are dead to the way of uh, this logical mindset that, you know what, oh, you know what, everyone's falling sick. I should take precaution. That's what you're dead to. That's the mindset that you're dead to. Everything that's making you think logically, you know what, oh, I need to um, save or, uh, I'm not saying don't save, I need to, um, you know, it's the, just the logical thinking of trying to prepare yourself the way the world is doing right now. You're dead to that. That's what you died to. It was nailed to the cross. The moment you were born again, you died with him. That old man of yours was dead. The old self, dead. You were buried with him and you were raised as him. So you now there is a new law that's working inside of you. And that's the law of life. And that's the law. that life is giving life to your mortal body. So you may live uh, in this physical body, which is subject to the law of sin and death. It doesn't matter if it's subject to the law of sin and death. There's a higher law in you. There's a higher law. A higher law is always going to trump over the lower law. How you renew your mind to that truth, you will see the manifestation of that in your life. How you renew your mind to the truth that there's a higher and a greater law. Amen? All right. It says, uh, Romans 6. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Say, I died. You died, so you're set free from this. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death, the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to god in christ jesus count yourselves dead to the old way of thinking count yourselves dead to the old way of reasoning count yourselves dead to uh this mindset that you know oh my family had hereditary diseases and now it's going to pass on your bloodline changed the moment you know all this ancestral curses hereditary diseases um someone in your family has had this condition, his grandfather, your grandfather, his, your father, and now you have symptoms of this, it's nailed to the cross. Your bloodline has changed. It doesn't matter if you were born of your father, your earthly father, and he's had things. Your bloodline has changed the moment you were born again. You're born of a seed. That seed is the incorruptible seed. It cannot die. It cannot fall sick. And if you have things in your body, if you have lying symptoms in your body right now, I just want you to know that it's been nailed to the cross. And I want you to see that there's a, a bigger law working inside of your body right now. It is the lo law of life. And that kills all manner of death, not just in your body, but around you. Whether it's death in, your, in relationships, finances, whatever it is, any form of death, it's been done away with. It's been nailed to the cross with your old self. Right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 17. Now, this is important. Okay, I want you to uh, pay very careful attention to this. This is Paul. Paul is talking uh, to the Corinthians and he's saying, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Again, I'm going to read this, okay? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, or the good news, not with wisdom and eloquence, 
lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. How does the cross of Christ be emptied of its power? What makes the cross of Christ void or empty of its power? Because we still see today among churches around, still struggling, still going through the same issues, no difference. It says the cross of Christ is emptied of its power. It's the wrong preaching of the gospel that is emptying the cross of Christ of its power. That is why we have to preach the right gospel, the right message, and the right truth. It is the right message and the right truth that's being uh, preached is why what gives the cross its power. The reason that the cross is emptied of its power is because people are trying to manipulate what the, the message of the cross is and has reduced the cross only to the point of, you know what, you're being saved of salvation. And now from here, from the cross, till I get to heaven or whenever I do get there, it's me trying to uh, work my way up to the Father, trying to get some sort of... Uh, trying to get some brownie points along the way and maybe I'll fast, maybe I'll diet, maybe I'll do something and try to get my way there. This is emptying the cross of its power. This right here, trying to get your way to the Father. That's the reason why we see among the churches, among believers, they're struggling and they're just going to the same thing because they don't understand that the power that is in the cross, he died to sin once and for all. You died with him. You've been given a new life. You have the law of life inside of you that's eating all manner of death. Amen. It says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. The cross is the power of God. He's saying, he's saying it himself. The power of God is in the cross. Understanding the cross, the true message of what the cross has done for you, that is the power. And if you don't understand the message, it says that you're, or if you're, if you're preaching the wrong message, it says that you're emptying, the cross of Christ is emptied of its power. Understand the true message of what that has done for you. Knowing that when you look at the cross, you're looking at your old man dead. Things that come up in your life, you know what? Nail back to the cross, say, you know you're dead. Know there's a law of life that's working inside of me that's greater than the law of sin and death that's eating all manner of death in my life, in around me, in my sphere. That's the law of life. You know, it's foolishness to those who are perishing because they don't understand these things. It says in uh, Corinthians 1, chapter 2, 14, the person without the Spirit does not accept things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. People who are not saved, they don't understand these things because it's of the Spirit. Only the Spirit can make you understand these things. Their Spirit is anyways dead. So if a Spirit is dead, there's no way they can understand. But if your Spirit has been made alive through Christ, you and I can understand these things because these are spiritually discerned. But I would also go to say that even though you are um, you have a new spirit and your spirit is alive. If you're still thinking Adam, if you're still thinking through the mind of Adam, through their old mind, it says you won't understand these things. Which is why we can still see it so evident that this cross of the cross of Christ, it says that is the power of God. We know we're looking for maybe a healing gift, maybe a um, prophecy, word of knowledge, and we think that that's power. People are thinking and looking at that as power. That's not power. This is the power. The power is in the right preaching of the cross. That is the power of God. He said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel, this gospel, for it is the power of God. Amen. All right, let's read. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. It says, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. 
Did you did you catch that? No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Is God a liar? Who is a liar? Yeah, Satan is the liar. This says that you cannot sin. If you are born of God, how many of you are born of God? Do you believe that? It says, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. So, do you make mistakes? Do you mess up? Yeah. I've done that so often. And, uh, but it doesn't change anything about my identity. It says, that seed, I've been born of the seed of God. That seed cannot sin. It can't. It can't. It's, I don't care what you've done, what you may going to do, or what you've thought is the biggest thing that cannot be saved. It says you're born of his seed. Remind you back to, the, to what I shared earlier. It says that that seed has made you innocent. The reason you can go to the, before your father and have a relationship with him is because he's brought you back to innocence. And he's looking at you in your spirit. He's not having a relationship with you in your flesh. Your flesh is dead. I want you to remind you again that each time you think of um, trying to do something for God in the flesh, just throw your flesh out there. Because he's not having a relationship with you in your flesh at all. He's having it to you, with you in your spirit that is exactly like him. Jesus, spirit, perfect spirit, born of God. He who is born of God cannot sin because you are born of God. That's who you are. Okay? Now, Satan has been defeated. He has been defeated, okay? Up until the time when Jesus died, Satan was around and he was, uh, he was the God of this world and ruling over and he had power over people. And nobody even was aware of who he was. He wasn't even a concept. Nobody had an understanding of what Satan is. Jesus came and introduced and made a public spectacle of him. And we're going to read this, okay? So in uh, Colossians 2.13, When you were dead in sin and in the un uh, circumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. So this is what he's done. It says that Jesus came and forgave us of all our sins and he's cancelled the charge of the legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us. And he's taken it away and he's nailed it to the cross. All of that has been nailed to the cross having disarmed, disarmed the powers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Jesus made a public spectacle of him. He was not known. Satan was not known up until then. Through, through his death on the cross, it said he disarmed the powers and authorities. You know what? Uh, in Roman times, the way they would disarm someone, uh, not Romans actually, before that also, when you would capture a king, what they would do is they would cut off their thumbs. They say that they would cut off their thumbs um, because you won't be able to hold a sword. If Have you ever tried holding something in your hand without the thumb? You can't, especially if it's, uh, I mean, you can, but if you're going to battle, you cannot go without a thumb. And they would do that as a way of mocking them and be like, you know what, hey, um, let's see what you got now. That is what has been done. So some of you are maybe thinking, oh, but you know what, why is it that we still see Satan around. What is it? What has he done? Uh, why is it that we still see so much of uh, demonic activity, activity here and there? Have you ever uh, killed a lizard? No, I've done it. Okay, when you when you smack that lizard, what happens? Its tail comes off, and its tail is just swagging around. Okay, but that lizard is essentially dead, and it's been taken care. It's dealt with. Satan is the same thing. He's been disarmed. He's been locked away. All he does now, there's no problem. There's no issue with Satan anymore. Our fight 
is not against Satan at all. It's against this mind out right here. Our fight is against the mind. And all he does, that tail, that wizard that still wags, or you know, that lizard tail that moves around, uh, all that's doing is just spreading lies, spreading false accusations, just uh, making you think something else. The battle is only here. And sure, if you allow yourself to be given to that, you'll probably see, you know, um, things like him overtaking you and, you know, you'll see the demonic activity. But not for you who and I who are sons of God. You and I who are sons who are born of the Spirit, who are born of the incorruptible seed, that doesn't apply to us at all. We are not fighting a devil. He's been defeated. As far as you and I are, are concerned, he's been defeated. He's been dealt with. That tail is wagging. All he's, that tail is doing is lying to you and telling you, trying to mess with your identity and telling you things that you're not. Uh, but this is to remind you again, and we are here to remind you and remind you of the power of, of the cross that is through preaching of the right gospel, of the true gospel, knowing that everything of your life, your old life, your added mindset is nailed to the cross. You cannot have death in your finances because that is nailed to the cross. You cannot have death in your relationships because that is nailed to the cross. You cannot have death in any area of your physical death or health because that is nailed to the cross. You have a new law working inside of you. It is the law of life. That life is bigger than the law of sin and death. It is higher. What law do you want to submit to? Yeah, that's, uh, that's for you to think. The law that you want to submit to is that, that law is what's going to show you the power of the cross and what the cross has accomplished for you. Our fight is not against principalities and powers anymore. I mean, our fight is not against flesh and blood. But these principalities and powers that are there, it's only through to your mind. All it's doing is just, it says we, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers and powers and dominions of this world. And it says that, it talks about the wiles of the devil. It's his trickery, it's his cunningness. All he's doing is just lying to you and telling you things that you're not. And our job, our responsibility is to submit to the truth, is submit to the finished work of the cross, renewing your mind constantly, knowing that you are born again not of flesh, not of things of this world, but born of God. That seed in you now has no hereditary diseases, has no sort of ancestral curses. Anything of, of your ancestors has been cut away and dealt with. You are a new creation altogether. And let this truth now, if you being a new creation, trump anything that is of this world. Now you're in this world and I know you we all interact with things on a daily basis. And those things are going to remind us that, you know, this is uh, that as if making you think that you're worldly. You are not of this world. That is what you were crucified unto. The cross of Christ crucified you to the world and the world system and the world's way of doing things. You are not of this world anymore. You're in this world, but you're not of it. You have been crucified to that mind. And now you have the mind of Christ. It says to put on the mind of Christ that is in you. Amen. So I want to leave you with that. I want you to stand right now. And just close your eyes. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for Jesus and we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the power of that cross and what that cross did for us. That cross dealt with our sin. It dealt with our old way. And it brought us back to you. And we can come before you as innocent blameless, guiltless, no condemnation, 
no unworthiness, no unrighteousness, no feeling of isolation, no feeling of aban abandonment, none of that. But we are accepted in your beloved. And we thank you, Father, that you are drawing the sons out there. We thank you, Father, for your word that's being spoken right now all across those churches that are preaching your word, your truth, your word, which is the power, your gospel, which is the power of Christ, which is the power of the cross. And we just thank you, Father, that that word is being sown. We thank you for the increase and the multiplication of that right now. If you're here this morning, and um, maybe you're on Zoom as well, and if you have any sort of lying symptom and this in your body or or things that are that you're struggling with or battling with right now i want you to just consider this right now i'm going to take that thought whatever that is and just nail it to the cross because that is your old man and that is your old self and i want you to just imagine it right now it being nailed to the cross i want you to just think of yourself also on that cross and think of yourself as being dead on that cross. Have you ever, and just think of this picture, you know, when you, I've gone to funerals before, and you'll see a coffin lying there, and you will have people going around and just paying their respects. I want you to go and pay respect to yourself right now on that cross and say, goodbye. That was the old self, and that was the old you. And I want you to see yourself being dead on that cross. Shikiri oto sundiri abahara ba sikiri andar nam horo suri bekhiri shikiri ba soro uri andar ba shikiri pori andar ba sahandar ba hori hiri hiri andar ba shikiri. Father, we just thank you right now for Jesus. Thank you for the finished work. It is not a half-hearted work. It's not a. He's not. Your, Jesus is not going to come and die again. It is a finished work once and for all. And we just nail all those wrong thinking, all those lying symptoms. All those Adam mindset, we nail that right now. And we just see ourselves dead to that old man and alive to Christ. And that law right now inside of you, the law of life, is eating up all manner of death. All manner of death is being eaten up right now. Death in the way you've been thinking death in your health, death in your finances. We thank you for the law of life that's working inside of you, giving you a different result, producing only the, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the law of life, which is life. Thank you, Jesus. So, right, man. Thank you. Just, we just, uh, let's just give a spiritual tithe right now. Just repeat after me. So, you say, Father, I am a son in your kingdom. Jesus, you are my high priest. And right now, we give you a tithe. We give you a thanksgiving. We give you an offering of all the life, all the understanding, all the truth that you've brought to my soul right now. And I just worship you. And just worship him. She handed a bow, so could he under number hold of a Syria, cut up a so could he under number hold of a sickity. Area handed a bow, shuri at a bassa under a bahora bakuri at a bassikiri, a rebe shikiri, de be sickity. Who are the other basha under a basukuru de bohund or a bashikiri de be see he under a robo. Oh, a basikiri. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen.